Good day, everyone, and welcome back to our next discussion, which is the discussion on the actual JBCG certificate number six. And note that we're still in the interim phase, so therefore my certificate is uh, referred to as the interim payment certificate. You also note that the detail reflecting on who's the employer, contractors, etc., that remains the same as from certificate one right up to the final payment certificate. Then we've got a couple of dates. The first one is your valuation date, and that doesn't have any effect on your payment certificate. It's only for noting um, to indicate on what, which day did you actually uh, been on site for this specific valuation. However, what is important is the issue date. So that's the actual date on which you uh, will forward your payment certificate to the principal agent architect. And you'll also note right at the bottom of the certificate, you'll note that I've got the same date, the 20th of, of April. So that is a date which will then determine the date of payment, which is then 14 days after the issue date. So obviously if the contact in this case, we issue the certificate on the 20th of April, and then the contractor must be paid on the 4th of May. If the contractor is paid after the 4th of May, then default interest will be applicable. And when we're going to prepare the next certificate, we will have to ask the question, uh, was the contractor paid on time? In other words, was the contractor paid uh, before or on the 4th of May? Then if we look at the, the four columns, you'll start with the column A, which reflects the contact sum. Now, this is based on the actual tender document, the bill of quantities. So your starting point is to look at the net contract sum. The net contract sum excludes that and it excludes any uh, amount for escalation if it was included in the summary page of the, the bill of quantities. So in this case, it's a net contract sum. Then the quantity surveyor will estimate what is the, the probable cost for escalation based on the tender, the net tender amount or the net contract sum, as well as based on the contract construction period. So in this case, the quantity surveyor estimated that the escalation will add up to 250,000 rand based on the net contract sum. And then we add the VAT, and that will give me then the contract sum figure inclusive of that. What is important to note is that the values for contract uh, column A, the contract sum values, will remain the same, it's fixed, from certificate one right up to the final payment certificate. So once you've plugged that, those figures in, it will remain the same throughout the, the project. Column B, however, re referred to the contract value, which, is, which will change. Every day we'll have a new contract value because of the change to the scope of the work. So your starting point would be to start off with the net contract sum. So those two blocks will be the same. The only variable item or values in this case would be your contract, uh, the, the value for the contract instructions, which is the authori authorized adjustments of contract value. Now that reflects to contract instructions, any variation to the work. Now in this case, we've got an estimated value of 215,000 Rand. Now also note that in the exercise, you'll note that the main contractor, we've already approved contract instruction number one to, to eight, as well as contract instruction number one to two for the electrical contractor. So those are uh, approved contract instructions and the contractor has been paid for. But I've also got envisaged contract instructions, there's indications that the client wants to, let's say for argument's sake, wants to change the external face brick to external plaster and paint. Or uh, there's a possible change in floor covering. However, I'm also going to include those future contract instructions, which I'm aware of. And I'm going to include it in my cost value for contract instructions. So, uh, although we're not going to pay the contractor for this 215 up till now, we will then just give the, the, the employer an indication that this is the possible value for the current contract instructions, but also possible future 
uh, contract instructions which we are aware of and not being approved yet. And because of this extra on the project, I'm going to increase my original uh, value for escalation to 237,000 Rand. So there's a slight increase because of that extra on the project. Should this be a saving on the project? In other words, let's say it's a negative 215,000 Rand. The escalation figure will then obviously reduce from 215 to let's say 200,000 Rand. All right. So if it's an extra on the project, your escalation will obviously increase accordingly. If it's a saving, your escalation figure will then be reduced accordingly. And then also we add our VAT to get to a projected value for the contract value at the end of the uh, construction period. So column B is a variable all the, the, the figures will vary, vary. In other words, those two figures is the variable uh, amounts. Obviously, I'm start off with that fixed figure, but these two figures will, will change every month to give the, the client or the employer an indication what is the final contract value. Good. So if we move on to column C and D, which relates to the payment certificate. In other words, we're dealing with certificate number six. So column C and D refers to the uh, certificate number six. If we can still remember the discussion on the rough work for certificate number six, I alluded to this figure and I've asked, remember this figure because that's my starting point. Nowhere in our calculations you would have picked up that figure of uh, 1.495. Nowhere have we determined that. So your starting point is now to start, first of all, plug in the subtotal figure, which is now from your rough work. All right. And then we will work backwards. So we plug in, first of all, the 1.54 million. There was no materials uh, on off-site or extended uh, sites, zero. We do have materials on-site, and that was that lump sum figure of 45. So to get to that figure, it's the um, subtotal, less materials off sites, less material on site will give me that value. So your first approach is to plug in that figure and work backwards. Also note in this case, your construction guarantee is a variable construction guarantee. Okay, it was selected a variable construction uh, guarantee so therefore it's zero meaning that with a construction a variable guarantee whatever you've certified the contractor will receive 100 percent we're not going to hold back any uh, amount in the form of a retention kind of all right so a construction variable guarantee is whatever we've certified the contractor will receive 100 percent then we're going to add the, the escalation and in this case, it, it amounts to 18,000 Rand. There was 14,000 Rand for the main contractor and 4,000 for the nominated subcontractor. So that gives me then a, a, a subtotal net certified for this month of 1.558 million. Less the previous month and that 1.245, uh, you don't have the certificate five, uh, but this figure was, was given. So we deducted and that means that the net amount certified for certificate six is 313 odd rand. There was no other expenses in the form of uh, penalties or any expenses that we need to add. So it's zero. We'll still back to that subtotal. We add the tax or the VAT in this case. There was no default interest. In other words, a uh, certificate five was paid on time, etc. Uh, and that brings me now to the total due to the contractor uh, of 360,000 um, Rand 539, inclusive of that. Now, because this is a, a contract which was signed under the variable construction guarantee, we need to complete these uh, blocks. Uh, if you follow that formula, that will give you a 50.6%. And this, not, this doesn't uh, reflect the construction period. It, it's based on the values. And then because of that 50.7, we're now above the 50% uh, mark. 
If it was the construction guarantee, which is a fixed with a payment reduction, we don't complete these two blocks. We'll look at the exercise where we, um, the contact has opts for the fixed guarantee with a payment reduction. Good. So that is the main contactor's uh, certificate. Uh, obviously, you'll, you'll sign it and forward to the, the principal agent. Then if we look at the recovery statement, you'll note the recovery statement, all the details are the same. And in this particular exercise, there was a zero amount for all the relevant items because there, is, there was no direct payments and the, uh, the previous certificate was paid on time. So therefore, there was no values to be added here. So all the values here is a zero. Then if we look at the last two certificates, that relates to the nominated subcontractor. In this case, there was only one, the electrical contractor, number six. Uh, the subcontractor is um, Mr. Shocking, electrical contractor. There was all the, the dates are, are, are the same. The same applies for the contract sum. Remember the provisional amount that was allowed in the bill of 200,000 Rand. We've estimated that the escalation based on that value is 23. Add the VAT to get to the contact sum. And once again, this also applied that for the contact sum uh, column, the values will remain the same from certificate one right up to the uh, final certificate. Then the contract of value column, we'll start off with the same, the net contract sum for the subcontract, the same 200,000 Rand. And in this case, just note the, the two uh, changes um, on, on the specific one. Uh, we've allowed in this case for the uh, nominated subcontractor uh, 2,000 uh, 2, Rand, that is now for contract instruction number one and two. There is, in other words, we can assume there's, there's no other future changes to the project. So we only, only know uh, of those two, uh, we are those two contract instructions, which uh, uh, adds up to 2,000 Rand. And because of that increase, we've just slightly increase the escalation from 23,000 Rand to uh, 23,500. Uh, now there's a little bit of extra escalation of 500 uh, on that additional 2,000 Rand. Add the VAT will give you a projected contract value of 259,000 odds. Okay, then if we look at certificate number or rather column uh, C and D, which reflects uh, the values for certificate number six, Again, that's our starting point. Remember the, uh, the value uh, of work done plus the additional 2,000 Rand for contract instruction. So that's my starting point. I'll first plug in this figure and work backwards. There was zero amount offsite, zero amount materials on site. So therefore I'm back to 62 for work done. It's a construction variable guarantee. So whatever we certify the contractor will receive 100% of the value, 62 in this case. The total amount for escalation for the nominated subcontractor was 4,000, so we'll get a total amount certified of 66,000 Rand. Now this figure, although we don't have certificate number five, we can just make a note for yourself that is given. Uh, let's say the total amount certified for certificate five was 40,000 Rand. Okay, just make a note that that is, is given. Obviously, if you do have Certificate 5, you will just go to Certificate 5 and just uh, uh, note what was the previous uh, total amount certified for Certificate 5, which in this case we just um, say it's 40,000 Rand. Plus your VAT will give you then a, a value of 29,900 due to the subcontractor. And, and again, it's a variable construction guarantee. We have to fill in the block for the percentage. If we note the, the last certificate, which is the payment advice certificate, majority of the, of the uh, values are the same. So uh, there's no need to run through this one. Um, so the contractor, the subcontractor can expect a, a payment to the end of the six months of 29,900 Rand. Good, I hope you've learned something today and we will then move on to exercise uh, two, uh, which is now the follow-ups uh, 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 certificate number seven. Keep safe and I'll see you next time.